May the 7th, 2013. This is Halima. I'm Hara Solomon for Timeless Roots Media, Culturally Conscious Global Exchanges. We haven't had a segment in quite a few years, possibly two years. Uh, right now, I, I'm estimating it as about two years. I have been preoccupied with uh, not just writing my late father's book in 2010 when I stopped off with these segments, but thereafter, soon thereafter, uh, in mid September through October of 2011, I began a fast on my, which is my now annual quest for the hunger and uh, drought and hunger drive for the starving in Somalia at the Horn of Africa. So with those things preoccupying my time, in addition to managing many Facebook groups, as well as my personal website for the uh, Somalia drought hunger drive, which is our Timeless Roots Media Culturally Conscious Global Exchanges website that some of you are familiar with by now. Uh, so a lot of things are on my plate, and I give thanks for your patience. Uh, this isn't something I must do. This is something I choose to do. Um, being culturally conscious, being um, aware spiritually, communally, socially, I take responsibility to represent uh, from the culturally conscious community from the Caribbean. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago originally in the diaspora outside of the continent. Here in the Western Hemisphere, uh, there are many of us who live and reside out of our national abodes or places that we were born. Uh, so therefore, if uh, we are not always aware by either radio or, or uh, internet news, I choose to bring tidbits of little um, portions of news tidbits that I think would be interesting to you. So with no further ado, um, we'd like to start here out where I live presently in the United States with what was uh, a large uh, conglomerate of events in the last two months. I would say there was uh, four bombings, shootings, mass murders, uh, just unruly behavior among the citizens of the country. Um, many believe that the Boston, most recently, so you aren't aware, there was a, a large bomb explosion in Boston, Massachusetts, United States, and some believe that the New World Order um, had had a hand in these explosions, in that that was a dress rehearsal for the upcoming events, which will include martial law, which is taking over of your individual rights and property rights of ingress and egress into your property without your permission for the government's uh, interest in finding so-called fugitives, etc. This is not new on the global scene. Uh, this is happening uh, worldwide in the way warfare is carried on. Now it's a technique and uh, somewhat of a modus operandi, I would say, of the government here in the United States as well. And I will not attest to that being what the claims are about the New World Order actually doing, uh, exploding these bombs and having staged some of these events across the United States in order to gain uh, attention to the need for gun control, as some have uh, a way of looking at it, especially the gun, the gun control, the gun people, <laughs> the National Rifle Association, particularly, and the Patriots who believe their rights are being given, taken away by the day. Uh, again, that's what's happening on the global, the, the, the local front here in the United States. Um, a Navy SEAL linked information that yesterday, actually the 5th, Sunday, yesterday the 6th, and today the 7th of May, were to be a major explosions of some um, highly top secret military security leak that a Navy SEAL leaked. Uh, a big man up in the government said that they intercepted some rogue nukes, nuclear weapons, devices that were planned to detonate, detonate around this time the 5th, 6th, and 7th of May, at places undisclosed in the United States. Thousands of lives can be affected if this were true. Not pretty news, but reality isn't always pretty. This is not confirmed, it is just another bit of information pulled from uh, various sources on the internet. Going internationally, uh, Somalia. Many know, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, that I have been working with Somalia throughout relief fund for the relief of suffering of thousands of people who are dying globally, annually, in that country with no government um, and, and no school system and certainly no control of warlords and warfare that's going on. Not just in Mogadishu recently, in terms of the bombing there, the 
14 lives of uh, military style suicide bombing, but more back to the um, information on Somalia generally. Uh, many may not know about Somalia in terms of the very long history of fighting colonialism, not only of like Ethiopia with the Italians and the British. But everybody else who wanted a piece of the pie, the most beautiful land of what is called the Horn of Africa. Uh, Somalia still desires to have an independent Islamic state without interference from the um, outside sources that are continually uh, targeting Somalia for the upheaval that's happening today, um, not just the natural climate change, which we'll talk a little bit more about later in reference to my model here, which is uh, my late father's uh, either his, his theory or assumption, we'll call it a assumption so far, and we'll talk a little bit more about that global climate change and reversals as it relates to Somalia and the drought. Uh, they have been fighting, as I said, for many years. Refugees are living in horrible conditions, attempting to um, survive in the, this center of learning, this center of learning almost like Timbuktu for many centuries for Africa, a center of trade and uh, learning for neighbors and even the neighbors in Ethiopia but at one time was conquested by Ethiopia with the help of the West, which is ironic because they're supposed to be sister-brother nations. But we'll have you look into that more yourself and uh, do your own research about Somalia so that you have an idea of why I'm so fixed on that part of the world and why it's so important to be recognized as what's happening there as a human emergency. Uh, going to Israel now. Israel, I believe personally, I'm not supposed to share my personal opinions, but again, I don't expect any calls or comments, but we believe that that's the 50, 50 second state, some of us, uh, in the United States, because so much influence happens from Congress to um, political action committees with the, the Israelis backing, and somewhat apparently with the support of the United States. But what is the United States doing? Is it a slap on the wrist to give to Israel because of what they've done recently in the two days to Syria? Syria has its own problems, as many of you may or may not know. Internal warfare, again induced by the West, again caused by infiltration and support, and military support by the New World Order fanatics and the new NATO and United States influence. Um, Israel is the root source, I believe, as I was saying, of most or many of the tinder boxes that are occurring in the Middle East, Palestine, many are familiar with, and the antagonism against Iran particularly why they said Iran has been transporting uh, arms to Syria, so has the United States. And we will leave that at that, and you will research yourself. Okay, so this tender box is in the Middle East, everything in the Islamic neighboring countries surrounding, with a lot of tension, and they are Israel, a foreign agent in the Middle East. Therefore, do the math. All right. To the home front on the Western Hemisphere, to Jamaica, I promise I would do a little bit of local news as well as, you know, cultural events and, and uh, happenings happening in, of course, my region of the world in the Caribbean. A few more short stories. Jamaica got to establish a comprehensive database of Jamaican professionals and investors abroad with international organizations on uh, migration. Um, migration. The Foreign Ministry has been examining successful diaspora models uh, such as these in countries such as Israel, India, Ireland, China, and Mexico to replicate the same in Jamaica, to take advantage of the very wealthy Chinese that are globetrotting and spending a lot of money all over the world. Hey, why not, is what I say. Um, the local, again, local front is Caribbean, Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, as it happened to um, this, chi this Chinese tourism market as well, St. John's uh, Antigua, uh, they are in the area where tourism is also being tapped on, and Minister John uh, Maganley spoke to Chinese authorities later this month in Beijing about renewing efforts to tap into the tourism market. He believes the time has come for Antigua Barbuda, as well as the rest of the Caribbean, to do more to attract the attention of Chinese tourism. Now, uh, to St. Lucia, something positive about single mothers this agency called SMILES, S-M-I-L-E-S, Single Mothers in Life Enhancement Skills, S-M-I-L-E-S. Um, this program is a government initiative get at providing not only jobs for single uh, unemployed mothers, but particularly of, they are particularly a vulnerable group. Um, the Regional Communication Limited, a company that makes, uh, produces in St. Lucia, 
celestial branded tablets, laptops, and cell phones for exports and domestic consumption has started another round of training for single mothers from the SMILES program. That SMILES, Single Mothers in Life Enhancement Skills. Wonderful progressive story from St. Lucia. Grenada and our final story, uh, Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago to bridge cultural barriers. St. George's Grenada reporting from the neighboring uh, Trinidad Isles or, ch or twin isles of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago have committed to work together to cross barriers and bridge cultures. That's wonderful news and anywhere there is a solidarity and collaboration among our island nations is always positive to hear. There is on the entertainment uh, agenda a new Carib Caribbean calendar and you may go to caribcalendar.com uh, for the 214 calendar of everything happening as far as entertainment and all the other lighthearted things that I may have uh, omitted on today's first uh, res resumption of our broadcast of Highly Noteworthy News. We'll be coming forward again with more of those types of entertainment news, and we thank you for listening in today. Share with a friend. And remember to go to our Timeless Roots Media Culturally Conscious Global Exchanges website where you may find from here on, as of May, the archives of my news broadcasts. It will be done once a week, once a strong, we want to stay positive, and once a strong, uh, we will be providing news and tidbits from around the world and relative to Africa and the diaspora, the continent, and as well as in the West and the islands of the Caribbean and elsewhere. Again, wonderful day to everybody. Keep tuned in, and thanks for watching Culturally Conscious News, Highly Noteworthy News with Halima M. Harris-Solomon. Blessed love and peace to everyone.